College of Charleston. Kind of getting a radio station almost. Basically, well, you only have you have more control over what you want to listen to, though. When it first loads up, you're going to see a screen very much like this. It actually it has a little more functionality than your typical streaming music player because there is an ability to look ahead uh, as well as look behind. And as you scroll along, if you see something that's interesting, you can just single click it, and it will begin to play. And if you decide that that's something that happens to fit your liking, you can just request more songs like that. It started about eight years ago uh, where there is this, this uh, mathematical result called Ziff's Law. We took that idea uh, and applied it to music in a much larger way. We take a piece of music and we analyze it. We're looking at its proportions. We're looking at proportions in terms of pitch, of duration, uh, melodic intervals, harmonic intervals. Um, distance of repeated notes, how long it takes for a note to repeat, distance of repeated rhythm values. We have found a statistical model that correlates with our sense of pleasantness, perhaps, our sense of how nice something may be. There are several systems out there that generate playlists or generate suggestions as to what music might be interesting. Pandora is probably the most known one. And the way that those systems do it uh, is to use musicologists. Our approach does not use humans in any way. It simply looks at the statistical proportions of the, of, of, the, of the song. What I find so powerful about what we've developed is that no matter what song or what you're interested in, our analytical metrics can be applied. No matter who you are, what kind of music you listen to, it will be useful to you. It was really interesting at the early stage to set up these neural networks and we were designing different neural networks and now to see that that process move to where we are now um, with a, a search engine that's on the web and accessible and an iPhone app that anybody can download, that's, it's pretty neat to see that whole process come to fruition. It's been very challenging. You know, typically you, you're assigned a project, you sit down, you write something that's very small and very self-contained, it does generally a trivial task of some sorts. And this is very, very different. Um, I've found the troubleshooting to be really a challenge because I have to deal with all these different possibilities. What can a user do? What does a user want out of the application? What can go wrong during that process? And um, so it's, it's very much taught me a lot more than your typical entry-level programming class. There are probably a lot of different things that we could do in the future, uh, different directions that we could go depending upon what, uh, what we see a demand for, what we, we see as interesting to us as a group.